Welcome to the study where I'll be taking this printer apart today and uh, I come fully equipped with a bunch of screwdriver sets because I'm going to need a lot of screwdrivers for this I guess and uh, the other thing I'm going to need is a lot of patience so um, to help me on my way well we're going to have some beer for those taxing moments let's start by looking at it there are no evident screws on the outside I can see one here Oops. this thing slides up and down which is really great when you're trying to pick the thing up um, I see a screw there and that's about all I see so far so let's get started with those Phillips yeah, I need a smaller Phillips I think you just have to accept that sooner or later something's going to break. Okay. Well, we got that off and I didn't destroy my monitor, which is a good thing. I'm going to get the glass out of there a little later. Um, great. One done. So, the ribbon is... Um, held in place with some retaining lugs which I might be able to get around but I might damage the ribbon and I'm not sure I want to do that just yet so what I'm going to do is just break off the lugs like that Getting warm. So the ribbon is glued in here as well. There we go, the glue is free now. The ribbon is free to move through there. Um, but it must be attached inside the printer somewhere. Uh, and I need to get this out of here. So why did I not bring pliers? All right, so I'm back. I'm upscaling my tooling, safety specs, because I'm going to be breaking plastic, and the last thing I need is to be blind. And uh, some pliers, because we know we're going to need those. And uh, Arduino versus Evil wouldn't be happy unless we had some sort of spanner in there. And if all goes wrong, we've got the fix everything tool. Right, so hopefully we won't need this, or this, but you know we've got them in case we need them. First thing, get rid of the plastic. God, I hate plastic. There's probably an intelligent way of doing this. This is my way. Jobs are good. Got something in there, a little stepper motor, some gears in here, which is useful, a little worm drive. And that's probably the light, I would imagine. So we'll keep that. This piece of junk. There's whoa. There's gearing on there. That's obviously what the other thing ran on that gear there.
No, quite a nice beefy motor. Look at it. Quite a nice motor back here. Um, definitely going to be salvaging that. That looks really good. There's some gearing back here as well. Um, I'm very happy with that. So I want to make sure we don't damage too much around this and, and destroy the wires or anything. So let's first free these wires if we can. See this retaining clip now. I, I can either force the wires off that but possibly damage the wires or I could just remove the little bit of plastic that's holding it in place and then the wires will come off easily. No damage. Okay. So they're attached to something there that's holding the wires just in place. Take that out. I think it might be glued in place. There we go, those wires are free now. And they run all the way across from, I presume, some sort of motor control unit back here. Again, a little retaining thing in my way. Now the cable's properly free. All the way back into there. So it goes free all the way back into there, so that's good news. Um, and the wires are free at the back. So I'm going to see if I can get the motor out. And I'm going to keep the screws as they're correctly tapped to screw into the, the motor body. So these are useful to me, very valuable. Um, I'll take that. Thing off. It's again one of those things under tension. Yep, I can see the motor's loose already. Great news. And I have the screws. Excellent. Nice little motor. It's got some weight to it. Right, got that one in. Now we're just going to put one. Oh, nearly dropped the screw. Put that one in this hole. Put the screw back. There we go. We'll take a look underneath. Yeah, that's where the motor is. Oops. Screws something. Um, and I can see under here, this thing here, looks like an almost an independent power unit. This thing here. Um, I don't know what holds that in place. It looks by the fact that it rat rattles, I would think maybe it's held with a clip or something. So let's take out the print reservoir, or ink reservoir. Sorry, I bumped the camera. Right, let's take that little spring off. Let's see. What is holding that in place? I think it's just clips. 
that's just plastic, so what do we do with plastic? We throw it in the ocean, that's what we bloody do with plastic. Yeah, just held in with a clip. Cable. It's not particularly long. But it has a little connector, so that's managed, I've managed to get that out, which is great. That's a power supply, model 1A541W, AC input uh, here in the UK, well, actually, probably universal, 100 to 240 volt. Um, 50 to 60 hertz and DC output of plus 42 volts at half an amp so 42 volts that'll be interesting Arr. Um but a metal's holding it in place this thing's holding it in place it's whoa well that, that was holding the metal which was holding the motor there we go Another motor. Looks very much like the other one we salvaged. Um, these two look the same. Yep. Uh, slightly different drive diameter. This one's got a bigger drive than that one there. But otherwise, probably very much the same one. Yeah, also made in Vietnam. Same number. RS445PA1423R. Um, don't know if that means anything to anyone, but another little motor. Well, the good news is we managed to get the printer to pieces and um, I didn't once have to resort to the pacifier, otherwise known as beer. But there are a couple of things I learned. One is what I thought was a stainless steel shaft is actually just a tube. Um, on some of the older printers you would have found that this was a little bit smaller but it was actually solid. Uh, this one's not solid, it's a tube. But you know, Tube is handy too, and they can come in really useful. Um, so holding on to that, we still have the the main display and the ribbon for that earth wire, which I haven't opened yet. Um, I'll do that in due course. <coughs> Whoa. Oh, no, no. The messy bit just drop some ink on the floor um, I want some of these gears there's obviously a ratchet system, system in there um, so I'll take that apart again in due course and then we have probably the biggest part which is this SD card reader um, Oh no, sorry, this is the SD card reader. This is something else. Don't ask me what it is. Some sort of... Con oh, yeah, who knows. The other motor, which I'll get out of this thing in due, also in due course. Uh, this was a little LEDs or something, so I'll find out where that's been driven from. In fact, I can see it on this side over here. It's, um, it's just plugged in right here. This feels a little bit weak. Um, so there are a couple of good things to get off there. And then of course we have the, the, um, the strip light for the, for the scanner, as well as stepper motor. Now we know it's a stepper motor because it's actually got five wires coming there. So those five wires are connected to these five wires of this, of this ribbon, which goes across and connects in there. So we know that this thing has a stepper motor driver um, 
some sort of circuitry in there for that. So that'll be useful if you want to use that stepper motor. Um, we'll probably drive it that way. So I'll leave most of that intact because, well, just could get damaged otherwise. Um, and then we still have the glass from the scanner, which could come in useful as well. Uh, that's about it.